Hi, my name is Todd Joseph, and I'm a cognitive scientist and psychology professor at Hillsborough Community College. I'm here tonight to give you a very brief introduction to some of the important concepts in cognitive science. See, I have two small children, Huxley and Sawyer. Yeah, they're really cute. Uh, and they're growing up in a world that's increasingly dysfunctional, right? Um, people are making decisions based on emotions rather than empirical evidence. We argue about politics and religion. Uh, and reason really takes a back seat to ideology. We don't often make decisions with logic, right? And that's problematic. What I want to talk about is partially that we spend over a trillion dollars a year on education in this country, education and training. And the people who make decisions about that don't often have a lot of education in cognitive science, understanding how we think and how we learn. But I think cognitive science can help with a lot of these problems. Cognitive science is the scientific study of mental processes. It, uh, it looks at basically how humans process information. Research in cognitive psychology looks at things like language, perception. They look at what things hinder memory and what things help memory. And tonight I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to some of the things that I think are most important or most interesting to the general public. One of the things we'd like to think is that most people would seek out as much information as they can when making uh, their informed opinions about the important topics in the world. Unfortunately, that doesn't usually happen. What we know from the research is that we have a tendency to seek out information that confirms our already existing beliefs, and we ignore information that disconfirms it. So we're argumentative in nature. And if we know that about ourselves, then we can try to fight those problems in the future. Another interesting topic is the idea of statistical learning. Everything you experience in your life is encoded in the neural structure of your brain. Your brain takes that uh, experience and tries to make a mental model of the world, which informs your opinions in the future and helps you make decisions about what's likely and what's not likely. It's sort of like machine learning if you're in computer science. Now, in order for those neural connections to be strengthened, they have to go through a process called consolidation. It's a physiological process that happens while you're asleep. And if you don't get enough sleep, then you end up being forgetful because you haven't consolidated those neural connections. So get more sleep. Another important concept that I want to talk about is this idea of schemas, right? We have those mental models that we use that uh, help us make decisions about the world around us. Um, so those predictions are based on your personal experiences. So if I ask you, uh, tell me about a four-year-old's birthday party, what, what would you expect to be there? You would say, there's cake and ice cream and screaming kids, right? And that's based on your experiences. Because no two people have the same set of experiences, no two people have the same schema, which means our way of looking at the world is fundamentally different from everybody else's. If we know that about ourselves, we can make better decisions. Probably one of the most important concepts in psychology is the idea of memory and memory errors. If more people understood about the errors that we have in our memories, we wouldn't be so confident in our own beliefs. Uh, research shows that if you ask people to try and remember an event that never happened, but you give them the expectation that it should have happened, they will create a memory for an event. It will also create details for memories that did happen, but they'll be different. Most of it, us had arguments with other people in the past um, based on saying this happened or this did not happen. And you remember things in completely different ways. The, way, the reason that happens is because we have fundamentally different experiences, which means the way we view the world is different. Right? Memory is fallible, and that's something that you really should know. I want to leave you with a story about demonstrating how memory is important. This is Ronald Gotten and Jennifer Thompson. In 1985, Jennifer Thompson was brutally raped in her dorm room, and Ronald Cotton was convicted of the crime based mostly on her eyewitness testimony. Ten years later, he was released because DNA evidence proved his innocence. They now travel the country explaining to police and prosecutors how memory can be fallible and how eyewitness testimony shouldn't really be trusted. I hope that each of you take the time to go and look up more about cognitive science and the things that inform the way you make your own decisions in your lives. And I'd like to thank my children and my beautiful wife. Have a good night.